Hello my friends, how are you? So we are on the third day of Seduction of Spirit here in uh, Amelia Island in um, Florida, <clears throat> exploring expanded states of consciousness, how reality is different in different states of consciousness, how biology is different in different states of consciousness, how perceptual activity is different in different states of consciousness and how actually everything that we call reality is subject to revision. So today, uh, um, a question that keeps coming up uh, very frequently when we talk about consciousness um, is um, going to be a conversation about uh, uh, this uh, whole topic that uh, uh, is very interesting to me and to a lot of people, and they keep bringing it up here, uh, is that if I'm eternal, then why do I disappear upon what uh, we call death? So if you'd like me to address this, and I know I've done this in different versions uh, before, but each time we give it a different iteration, and look at it uh, in a slightly different way or ex explain it to ourselves in a slightly different way, then uh, it becomes uh, clearer. So if you want me to address this topic, why do we disappear upon death, then uh, uh, please uh, let me know. Uh, press the like button, ask other people to engage if you think they might be interested. Give me your feedback, uh, both positive and negative, so I can learn. And uh, then we uh, go further. Hi, Shraddha. Hi, Linda. Hi, uh, Sonia. And hi, Mirjana. Uh, so, uh, do you want me to discuss this topic? Um, Aurora says, yes, many people need to understand. Uh, Lisa says, may all beings be eternal. Sarah said, I'd be interested. Piper says, yes, please. Mehtab says, yes, please do. I have a hundred year old dad who doesn't want to disappear. I love it. Um, I think nobody wants to disappear. So, um, let's, uh, Let's proceed. We are almost 800 people here. And uh, Zubin Mistri, Che Baba in Mumbai. How are you, sir? Elaine uh, Borges uh, from Brazil. I'm coming to Brazil later this year to Sao Paulo, so maybe I'll see you there. Uh, Patty faces wonderful dancing. Yes, we had an amazing time dancing with Sa yesterday on stage here at seduction of spirit um, okay let's go we're uh, up to 900 uh, maybe a thousand people here in this forum which is a good place to start our, our discussion if i'm eternal why do i disappear um, when i die so um, it's a very interesting question because you have been appearing and disappearing all the time, <laughs> even uh, um, uh, this lifetime. So when I say you have been appearing and disappearing every, every moment, um, I mean it literally, you as a body and a mind have been appearing and disappearing ever since you were conceived, okay? So you appeared as a fertilized egg, as a body-mind, of course, the beginning of the body-mind, the body-mind that you have right now. And um, you just uh, kept uh, flashing yourself on and on every moment as a perceptual activity which you have been taught to identify um, as your body. But that perceptual activity changes every second or actually every fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second. No sensation 
lasts more than a uh, fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second. No sensation, uh, no perception, no perceptional snapshot um, in time um, is repeated. It's there and then it disappears. So at the most fundamental level of experience, and I'm talking about experience, I'm uh, not even talking about atoms and particles which do the same thing, which are human constructs, but I'm talking about experience. Every sensation is ephemeral, evanescent, um, and it disappears as soon as it is born. So birth and death are happening instantly in an eternal now as experience, okay? And what is that experience? S-I-F-T, sensations, which are sense perceptions, images, imagination, feelings, emotions, and thoughts, the interpretation of these experiences. So this, what we call experience, is going on and off, is oning and offing um, eternally and timelessly in what we call now. Therefore, actually in the deeper reality, there is no such thing as a body. What humans call a body is a name given to snapshots of perceptual activity that seem to have continuity, although they are discontinuous. They occur, they disappear, they occur, they disappear, and uh, they occur and disappear as soon as they occur. Okay, right now these words, uh, by the time you hear them, they have disappeared. Okay, and also by the time you see me, what you saw no longer exists. Because we are, a, as body-mind, we are a ceaseless activity in a timeless now. And because the ceaseless activity is so fragmentary, so transient, so ephemeral, so evanescent, it cannot be caught. Uh, it cannot be caught. It cannot be grasped. But we give it continuity by our presence as being. So let's think of this like a sutra dhara. Sutra is a stitch, a thread. And the sutra um, is, uh, um, is a thread of being the thread of being, and on that thread of being are these little snapshots of experience. Let's call them little microscopic beads. Okay, and they're each individual. And um, they appear and disappear, but the presence of being gives them a continuity. Just like watching a movie or um, a digital movie these days. You know, the, the digital on and off goes on and uh, the only continuity is the screen on which it is going on on and off. Uh, it's a good analogy that Rupert Spira uh, uses all the time. You are the screen and not the program on the screen. But that's fine. We are the program on the screen as a body-mind and it's a changing program. In the past, I've called it a qualia program. Qualia means quality of awareness. The color red is a qualia. The taste of strawberries is a qualia. Any experience, mental or perceptual, is a qualia. And these qualia um, events are happening, as we might say space-time events, in a timeless, spaceless, dimensionless, or infinite dimension presence of being, being. Uh, very, very often this being in spiritual traditions is called the soul. In cognitive science it's fashionable to call it uh, a conscious agent. So you and I are conscious agents that are um, actually flashing on and off as uh, perceptual and cognitive activity, which is a modified form of being itself, interpreted 
as the changing experience of the body. Okay, but the real thing to understand here now is your body is not a noun, it's a verb, it's a process. And this process is occurring in the presence of being. Um, we know this from our own experience um, because being as I am, not as I am Deepak Chopra, but being as I am is present in the changing experience that we call Deepak Chopra. The body is changing, the mind is changing, emotions are changing, images are changing, sensations are changing, perceptions are changing, and at all times, this is the presence of timeless being, which uh, is um, eternal and timeless. Eternal doesn't mean endlessly stretching in time, but not in time, not in time not in time at all. So even modern cosmologies, you know, uh, which can be very confusing, Big Bang, etc. When we think of the Big Bang, it was neither big nor did it bang. There was no noise because there were no biological organisms to experience the noise. But there was eternal, unbounded field of being having an experience of itself as timeless self and then it wanted to know itself so it created the experience of subject and object and innumerable uh, differentiation of these subjects and objects and um, and uh, so undifferentiated consciousness which is infinite became differentiated in its expressions just like a stem cell or a pluripotential cell differentiates into eyes and nose and tongue and fingernails and hair follicles and brain and genitalia and uh, and uh, everything else in your body but it still is the same cell so the same consciousness one consciousness differentiated into infinite modes of knowing and experience and these modes of knowing and experience are body-mind. Your body-mind is both an experience and an instrument of experience. So everything you experience, uh, a distant star in the Milky Way galaxy or something very close uh, like uh, your own body, your hand, whatever you experience, that experience is happening right now in an eternal being. So the experience is transient. It comes and goes in less than a fraction of a fraction of a second. And that experience we call the changing body, mind and world. But the being in the presence of that experience is a constant. The seer is the non-changing factor in every changing scenery. How's that? The seer is the changing factor in every non-changing scenery and your mind and body in the universe are the scenery. You are not the scenery, you are the unchanging seer in the midst of the change, changing scenery. Now even the unchanging seer as a jivatman, which means as a conscious agent, a soul, is evolving as a result of experience and interpretation of experience evolving on the never-ending horizon of creativity, evolution, imagination, and experience. So that non-changing self is also evolving into more expanded domains of awareness where it can choose shifting experiences. So now um, let's uh, try and understand this through maybe even a physicalist on interpretation, um, physicalist metaphor. So let's use the physicalist metaphor of an electrical bulb and all the electrical appliances um, that you can see, perceive, or imagine. Right now, um, 
this watch that I'm wearing is powered by electricity. Okay, there's a battery there and it's powered by electricity. I can recharge the battery if I want. Um, but so is every light bulb in the city. So is every television set uh, um, that you can imagine. So is every radio. So is the phone or handheld device or computer uh, that uh, you can... Uh, um, you're probably using right now to uh, uh, to have this experience so uh, all these devices that we have today in today's world are powered by the same electricity and um, there are millions of light bulbs that are being uh, created new models and uh, new models of computers new models of automobiles airplanes robots we're just uh, endlessly revising the instruments and improving them actually, right? But when the light bulb finally um, uh, dies because of entropy or it's lived its lifetime, the electricity is not affected. When uh, the um, computer finally uh, fails uh, because it's... Uh, been there for a long time and you want a new computer then you expand it I mean you throw it away and or give it away or you know um, recycle it or whatever but uh, the computer is powered by electricity and the electricity is not affected so too consciousness is not affected in its varied expressions just like all those electrical gadgets and bulbs and computers and iPhones and Androids and watches and TV sets and all those devices, microwave ovens, they're powered by electricity and they have, in a sense, birth and death. Uh, but um, the, the electricity, the electromagnetic field, which pervades all of space and time, is not affected. <clears throat> So is that um, fundamental electromagnetic field impersonal? Of course it is. Likewise, there's an aspect of being which is impersonal, it is universal. But there's also an aspect of being which is personal because it takes a certain trajectory uh, as a form, as an appearance, as an activity. And that activity is an awning and an offing of its own self. And uh, at a certain point, uh, it realizes, been there, done that, and uh, let's find a new model. And so then you create a new model of yourself. You just um, not only recycle, but you evolve, like a spiral staircase, as I mentioned before. So um, this is happening right now in your body. Every cell is dying and being born, and uh, yet your body, as long as uh, you have the experience of that something that we call a physical body, as long as you have that experience, then uh, uh, those cells are being born and they're dying all the moment, uh, all the time, eternally and timeless now. So what is uh, death? Death is the termination of a qualia program. Birth is the beginning of a qualia program. And every e experience in between is an intermittent stream of qualia. Intermittent, fragmentary, amorphous, ill-defined. Um, we give it meaning by calling it a body, a mind, and a world. So, um, death is a human construct based on a false identity. And so, what is the false identity? Uh, it is, I am a mind, I am a body, I am a personality, I am my thoughts, I am my feelings, and I am my emotions. When in fact, I am is uh, independent of uh, all of that. I am is um, 
I am is timeless and as a result it is independent of its innumerable experiences. Again, as I've said before, um, the awareness of an experience is not the experience and therefore it is intrinsically free of experience. So um, how do we know that? From our direct experience. Okay, uh, look at the plant behind me, then look at your own body, and then look at the curtains, then focus on what I'm saying. In every moment, you are shifting from one experience to another. And that automatically shows you that you are independent of all experiences. In fact, you can consciously choose the experience you want by even one word or a thought. You know, you think rose and suddenly there's an image experience, there's a smell experience, there's a taste experience, there's a, there's a texture experience, there's a visual experience, and then, you know, think of the Empire State Building or that word, and, and the entanglement of qualia suddenly shows up. The qualia that are very vague and ephemeral and uncatchable and dreamlike, um, we call them uh, the mind and the qualia that are more congealed and reified we call them uh, the physical body and the physical world but it's all a process in the self of the self knowing itself so consciousness knows itself as experience and the raw material of experience the building blocks of experience the vocabulary of experience is qualia and uh, we can use these qualias to create um, um, words because words embody embody an entanglement of qualia and then the words also are linked to as i said entangled with all these other qualia sensations perceptions images feelings and thoughts that we interpret as the word. In fact, there's only awareness, knowing itself as um, experience and um, in the deeper reality there's no subject-object split, although just like uh, the one electrical field can create many devices, the one consciousness can appear as uh, many sentient beings that um, are creating their own universe, mostly unconsciously, but you and I now know that because we are independent of the experiences we have, that our awareness is independent of the shifting, changing experiences we have, then it can choose to go back to any experience. So as a result of this, um, we can free ourselves from all constructs including birth and death. They do not apply to you or me at a fundamental level. They only apply to the changing uh, experiences in every moment of an eternal now. What uh, is changing is perception, but the perceiver is invisible. So the perceiver was always invisible it is invisible right now and um, and yet you know that you as the perceiver exist in fact existence is all there is when existence and awareness being the same thing is all there is um, non-existence is not an experience okay non-existence is not an experience therefore it literally means what it says it does not exist non-existence does not exist so you as a conscious agent exist um, everything that you see and perceive and know actually doesn't exist it uh, is coming and going like this, twinkling of an eye. 
So to be meta-human is to wake up from the dream. I love quoting Wittgenstein when he says, our life is a dream. We are asleep, but uh, once in a while, we wake up enough to know that we are dreaming. The same thing that the Buddha said. Um, this lifetime of ours is transient as autumn clouds. To watch the birth and death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is like a flash of lightning in the sky, rushing by like a torrent down the steep mountain. But now, as I wake up, I realize that I am the dreamer and not the dream. So my friends, let's just stop there today. Keep dreaming. And the bigger your dreams, the more expanded your consciousness, <clears throat> the more choices you will have to resurrect your soul into new experiences in the theater of space and time which is your own projection. Keep dreaming and dream big. Stretch more than you can reach. So what's a dream for? Thank you. Ramanand Dixit, thank you. Aurora, thank you. Emily, thank you. Marie, thank you. Leah, thank you all of us. So eternal invisible consciousness incubates upon death in much like a sleeping state and then it starts to dream and then it dreams this, this what we're having right now. But um, the dream goes on because the dreamer never stops dreaming.